Yes to public. And we are live. So hey there. It's good day, Google Plus, and it's another great day in Florida. I'm having a wonderful time down here in Kissimmee, enjoying the beautiful sunshine and the great weather. So uh, I'm happy today. And my guest today, let's go right across. I have Craig Fifield. And How he's you doing, here. Jeff? Good. Thanks for being here. Uh, Larry Fournier. Fournier, and I always get your last Wait, name a little. That's okay, Chef. That's it. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Caribbean cooking and the master chef of Google+. Plus. Let's just leave it at that then. And we have Mark Vang here today. Hi, Mark. Hello. How's it going, Chef? Dennis? Great. Thank you. And Melanie Hall is here with us today, too. Hello. So we have a great show for you. Uh, we're just going to start off... Uh, and let everybody do a little talk about what they do on Google Plus and how they enjoy it and things that they do. And then we're just going to have some interaction between each other. If you've seen it before, you know how it goes. If you have questions, ask them in the comment bar. We have the comment tracker on, and we will get to your questions as soon as we can. So let's start off, Craig. I'm going to let you start since you're first in a row. All right, so my background, I started back at the end of 1995 uh, developing websites quickly realized I preferred marketing websites, so I got into the SEO field um, really before SEO even existed. Uh, did that for a year, got hired by a local startup, developing web marketing products for them, and we were successful enough that a year later we were bought out by Microsoft. From there, I worked for Microsoft for 10 years developing web marketing apps um, for them, and I think it was 2007, I um, just went back on my own doing social media SEO consulting um, from home. And that's it. So you've been enjoying yourself then pretty much. Quite a bit. I, I, I refer to it as a quality of lifetime. Absolutely. Absolutely. Larry, it's all yours. Hey. Uh, well, Chef, we kind of came on here at the same time back in uh, 2011. And... Um, I just bought my passion, which is which is cooking and, and food, Caribbean food to be more specific, which is something, uh, well, I live in, in Trinidad and Tobago, which is part of the Caribbean. So I just brought that on to share it with the community at large. And it's been, it's been fabulous. It's been great. Um, I do the HOA shows, the Cooking Caribbean, and I've also introduced other foodies who like me had passion had a passion for cooking I like uh, Stacy Stacy Fraser Daniel Fontaine Serena Bland who also does uh, Caribbean cooking and the, my latest um, involvement is with helpouts I'm Ooh. I'm doing a series of uh, of helpouts with uh, again with the Caribbean uh, recipes that uh, that I, I'm sharing with with the world now. <laughs> How have you found the help outs to be so far, Larry? Well, this is the, the third day, and um, so far people are just pretty much kicking the tires, like everything else is new, and uh, it's getting a lot of traction. Google has done some promotion, uh, but they, I know they have an advertising campaign that's coming uh, once they work out all the little bugs in the um, in the help out system not that they are many they're you know just small um, things to little annoyances mm -hmm. but for the most part it's it's pretty good and the community that it, that we have the help outs community um, it's very vibrant and the folks are in there helping each other if they have a question on on, on, on customers um, they post it and you know people in there to to, to help so it's it's so far the experience has been good. Great, good to hear. Thank you, Mark. I turn it over to you. Okay. Well, uh, I'm involved in what we're calling social media optimization, and uh, one of the fun things was uh, I I used to drove truck for about six or seven years, and when I left the trucking profession, um, I got back into computers and was very interested in social media, and so I started uh, investigating you know all these different things and learning a lot about them and uh, so one of, one of the first things that I had to deal with was what what is it that I do what do I call myself because I looked at what I was interested in and if you're familiar with any 
tech fields at all. There are always all kinds of buzzwords and everything. And of course, in social media, I think we, we excel at that because you know you have social search engine marketing, uh, you know social media marketing, social media optimization. I won't even bore you with them, but uh, so the first thing I had to do was figure out what it was I actually enjoyed doing and what I was good at, which is important too. Uh, and that's social media optimization. I enjoy the social media side of building search engine rankings uh, for websites. Um, on the other side of that, uh, you know, you've got uh, search engine optimization and stuff like that. I also find very interesting, but I just don't have the uh, the deep background in that kind of uh, uh, those types of things. I'm trying to learn as much as I can from David Hammerland and Mark Trapagan and those kind of guys. But it's kind of hard to keep up with them, and Eric Anga as well. Kind of hard, hard to keep up with all that, so I just uh, uh, learn what I can. But that's that's what I'm interested in. That's what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. I spend a lot of time on Google+. Plus. I have a, a small community where I help people try to sort out how things work, like Hangouts and uh, using Google Drive and stuff like that for all kinds of nifty little things. There are all kinds of cool tools that Google gives us, so it's very, uh, very interesting to, you know, I focus my time here instead of a lot of other networks. And that's kind of it in a nutshell. So uh, yeah, I think thank we've... you for having me on again, Chef Dennis. Oh. My pleasure. I'm so glad you could join us. And uh, yeah, it seems like more of us are really getting more involved with Google Plus. And mm -hmm. I know I've left my other social medias. I, st I still go on every now and then, but they don't get anywhere near the time that I provide for G Plus. This seems a lot more interactive. All right, uh, Melanie. Hello. Thank you, Chef Dennis, for You're having me here. And hello, gentlemen. Hey. Hi, Melanie. Hey. <laughs> I'm Melanie Hall with Big Uptick Social Marketing and a uh, small business entrepreneur and it's going really great. I, uh, I have a strong, well I actually have a degree in logistics and supply chain management where I worked for a huge corporation for almost six years in their uh, supply chain division uh, supporting the contract side and uh, you know just didn't get a chance to to move up with 15,000 employees there. Uh, so then when I left, uh, the, the marketing side of me, the true marketer in me said, do what you want to do. So I went to work for a small company and that was with the, uh, as a social media director and that's where it was just fabulous. So now I'm on my own and I'm able to shine as bright as I want or as dim as I want. And it's just, it's, it's, it's a fantastic journey meeting great people and I absolutely love it. That's good. I know Google Plus has really provided us with a great medium for meeting different people yeah. from all absolutely. over. Um, you know, I think some Sometimes some of some of the ones coming on get pigeonholed in whatever uh, direction they're heading in, and they miss out on the big picture of meeting all you know great people from all over the place and with different interests. You know, and you really have to just put yourself out there and and try and uh, meet more people. Uh, yes. Right, Larry, Larry, you've done a great job with that. I mean, you're just all over there. You know more people. Um, well, the the thing is, uh, Chef Dennis, help outs is the tool that afforded me to do that and if like you just mentioned the folks who are coming on if they would just take a little time and explore the help outs uh, not the help outs sorry the hangouts, hangouts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have help outs on the brain the hangouts sorry you know uh, take a little time explore the hangouts you meet incredible people you know and I think Martin Sherbinton he was doing, when he first came on, he was doing uh, Kamoogling mm -hmm. on Saturday mornings where, you know, we would open a series of hangouts and just meet new people. People just come in and, and that, that's, that's how relationships build and that's how communities uh, are formed. So um, if the folks would just take part in some hangouts, it would, um, it would really pay off in the end. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. Yeah. 
Yeah, the Hangouts have really been a marvelous tool. I, I know um, somebody was saying today that they keep getting more invitations for events and they don't want them. I said, well, you know, it's not really that big of a deal. Yeah. You know, I, I'm guilty of sending out too many probably, but uh, just, you know, mm -hmm. click it off. If you don't want to go, that's fine, you know, but don't get all upset that you're getting too many because these are, these are great opportunities you're missing out on. You should go to some of them. You know, maybe you can't make them all. Time doesn't permit, you know, but when you can watch some, you should. Right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. 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 All right. So, how's everybody finding this new uh, searchable? Mm, with our post being a searchable and uh, hashtags being searchable, I know we talked a little bit about Hummingbird uh, last time you were here, Mark. Uh, any anything else happening in this world? Anything else changing? Well, I've seen. Uh I've seen a lot of talk uh, lately about images and how they're going to start working into search too. And I've had to rethink. I get a little lazy when I do my blogging and stuff. If I put an image on my blog, I just, you know, it could be named image123.png, and that's you know, horrible, <laughs> horrible stuff I'm doing. I know, I know. And uh, but just to be fair, I don't do website SEO optimization, so you know, <laughs> it, um, so I'm only I'm only screwing up my own website when I do these things, not somebody else. Um, but it but it just seems you know before that was a best practice mainly that you know you need to tag your images properly and you know so I was just being a sloppy webmaster before but now it's really you know a lot I'm seeing a lot of prominent individuals talking about, about how important images will become to search so once again we have something that that uh, you know maybe we weren't really focusing on that that is going to become very prevalent in search. Uh, and uh, so I've, I've kind of shifted, you know, I really need to kind of up my game. Once you, once you do these things, I think, once you do them, make it part of your daily routine when you're updating your blog, it becomes a habit. It's not that big a deal. But uh, uh, we all have to learn good habits and uh, have to keep track of what Google says uh, the good habits are now, I think, too. So um, right. that, that's kind of what I've been picking up on the radar there is uh, images. Okay. I forget where I read it, but someone recently uh, mentioned images as a whole new visual language. So, like with that in mind, you, you look at Pinterest and all the social media platforms. I think for sure we're going to see it surface a lot more in search. Yeah, uh, I... And an another factor that I like to kind of point out to a lot of Google Plus users is you really want to be careful what you're plus wanting and sharing. Because um, you think you know it might just be a casual share, but that's going to show up in Google Image Search forever. Um, I, I actually watched I, I watched a, a great video that was um, it was basically an action movie that someone made on YouTube, but the screenshot, the still shot on the video was a little bit provocative, and and I wanted to plus one it really bad because the the video was good, but I second guessed myself and said nah, because that that little <laughs> screenshot will show up. So you need to keep yeah. things like that in mind with uh, you know search ever expanding. Yeah, yeah. it's a good yeah. thought there. Yeah. I know we I, have I, to be careful. Go ahead, Larry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I guess. Well, I'm glad Mark brought out the point with images and um, tagging them correctly because I am not good at that. <laughs> 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 and as the raw image comes up, whatever number it is, I just you know put it up. <laughs> so. Um, that's that's a good point though. That's that's a real good point. Moving forward, as far as search and uh, search is concerned, and semantic search and all those new things coming up, I guess I have to be more mindful and um, you know make sure the content is as pristine and as presentable as, as possible. Well, I have a I have a suggestion how you can begin to tag. Was Interested? that? I have yeah, a suggestion sure. if uh, you're. If you want to have just an easy system to, uh -huh. to start tagging, uh, at the very, do you know what the pipes are? The pipes, pipes. instead of commas when you uh -huh. when you uh, name things when you oh, name files. Oh, the pipe. Yeah, yeah, that's that straight up and down yep, line. Down. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, they call that a pipe. P I P E, right. like you smoke okay. a pipe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And instead of putting commas. Or semicolons when you're building your string of like you name your you would name your picture mm -hmm. of what it is like if it's um but you name it to what topic it is if it's a clown holding a balloon mm -hmm. but your blog isn't about a clown holding balloon mm -hmm. don't call it that because you want it to be 
for your blog. So mm -hmm. if you have a picture of a clown holding balloon, but your blog is about um, state fair food, then mm -hmm. you should your first part should be state fair food to match whatever your blog is about, and then the middle part can be something else that that you draw from that article, okay. and then the last part is the name of your company, and so you should have uh, you know one phrase pipeline another phrase pipeline and then the name of your company so, so if you get into that habit that would work so the pipe becomes a separator then yes yes okay. is, is yes. that in the description of the, the picture then or is that in the tags um, that is in the you can put it in the description the meta tags uh, if you use WordPress I, I, don't, I yeah. guess I should mm -hmm. clarify that um, if you use WordPress and you're going through your meta description, because you also still have the option, remember, to use your um, snippet capabilities. So that's a separate process altogether. And where what's you that? Can, that is where you go through the uh, the backside of the um, of your web tools, mm -hmm. webmaster tools in in your Google Analytics side. Uh, so you go down to Webmaster Tools, and then you'll find uh, Labs at the bottom on the left-hand panel. And when you click in there, you'll see um, Snippet uh, Data Structure. So that's when you go in and you, and you, instead of making Google decide what they want to draw out from your from your uh, content, you uh, pick out what you want to be seen on the Google page under the description. So they call that a snippet. So that, that's where the uh, semantic search is really going mm -hmm. to um, shine a lot because if you have actual sentences in there along with your pipes, you mm -hmm. know, your pipes uh, this, that highlight your keywords and your main content, um, you'll, it'll, it'll do so much better for you. Good to know. Chef Dennis, uh, there's a question here from Esther. I see that. Let me pin it. Mm -hmm. Okay, Esther wants to know, can you say something about the use of images from Google searches and image searches and paying mm -hmm. for them? Uh, some of the images sourced are not connected to a photo shopping cart. Are we free to use them? That's, that's a good question because mm -hmm. we do uh, get a lot of problems with people just using images. Anyone like to chime in on that? or? Well, I'll chime in on that. I've, I've had a couple of discussions about that in my uh, community. Um, I would say that if you can't trace the source of an image, if it's something that's been shared or, or is so diluted in Google search that you can't find out really who created the image and it looks like a pro professional photography image, uh, you might want, want to avoid using it. I mean, uh, just my, personally, you know, I like to give attribution to the, to the original creator of any type of art, whether it's photography or artwork. There are sites you can go to where the uh, individuals upload artwork or photographs and you're allowed to use them under a Creative Commons attribution where you just say this photograph by such and such and you're good to go. You can use it on your website or blog. Uh, but if you just come across something that's really cool and you want to use it, uh, and you and you do an image search and like 20 you know 100 different websites come up that means that it's been shared so many times you probably can't figure out who to uh, attribute properly so I would avoid it but you know uh, different people kind of deal with those things differently I mean there is copyright in the United States so you might want to watch out uh, somebody mm -hmm. finds you using their image they might have their lawyer give you a little tap on the shoulder and and tell you to take it off your website so yeah, and, and images are one of the few things that are really copyrighted uh, that the person that took it owns. Uh, so I know with food bloggers we run into that a lot of times, and people don't know, and they'll just use our pictures on their uh, their blogs. You know, they take recipes too. Uh, there's not a lot you can do about that. But the the pictures are belong to the person that took it, so you have to be really careful about reusing them without permission. But I have a suggestion. Mm -hmm. The the uh, the site that is very reliable for me that I the source rather that's very reliable for me is called uh, freedigitalphotos.net and what that is um, it's totally free royalty free uh, and and the only agreement you have before you download that the image for you um, is that you have to attribute to them somehow but if you use them all the time 
you can just um, have have that uh, link freedigitalphotos.net as part of your footer to uh, attribute that this is where you're getting your photos. In my case on our website we have a whole page devoted to behind the scenes so that way you don't have to mention it all the time. And then of course the other suggestion is it's wonderful if you know a um, a young person who is taking photography and wants to do that as a um, a freebie just for experience. You know, you can give them. You can go to a high school student that's just, you know, or college student mm -hmm. that's taking pictures and say, "Hey, I'm, I want to have a picture of such and such. Do you think you can come up with something?" And then you can, you know, work it out. And then so it's a win-win for them mm -hmm. because they can get the experience and follow assignments, and then it's a win for you because then you get what you want. That's a good mm -hmm. suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so uh, Larry, you have uh, the Pirates Pub too. Are you still using that? Well, the Pirates Pub that is uh, between George Sepich and myself. Okay. And uh, he he's he's the captain of the ship. And uh, right now we're on a slight hiatus, and we should be back. Hopefully, hopefully, if not by the end of this year, by early of uh, 2014. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't seen yes. anything in a while, so I was curious yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> All right. Is anybody else planning on and uh, using some Hangouts? Uh, Craig, I think you might be muted. So yeah, I've been. I've actually. The, the hangout hangouts. Keeps, I mean. The hangout keeps stalling on me. Okay. Uh, mm. Yeah, I've, I've noticed ever since they came out with this new interface. Uh, just to, um, I, I'm not entirely happy with it because things keep flipping around. I don't know what you guys are seeing, but it seems to be generally more laggy with me. And I like to mute myself when I'm not talking, and the way that little that little control bar keeps sliding away from me has kind of added a couple extra <laughs> seconds for me to, you know, respond to things. So I'm always trying to anticipate and get that out. So anyway, I didn't mean to didn't mean to jump on you there, uh, Craig, but uh, I'm finding it a little funky too. Uh, yeah. So today today for me it's just it just seems like the connection something's wrong with my connection. It just keeps I keep losing it. Um, but in regards of help outs, I'm looking to not necessarily use help outs. I have a few friends and family members that might be able to use it. Um, but in terms of hangouts, I'm looking to maybe start one of my own. And I, I, like you guys were saying earlier, I think it's it's where the party is. It's where you get to meet everybody. It's where you get to really share and learn. Um, I, I just think it's it's awesome, especially the way it automatically pumps over to YouTube. Uh, that's mm -hmm. really great. And then um, from there, I think it, it's really wise to consider extracting the audio and making it a podcast. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Now, how is the quality of the sound when you do that? I, I've, I've talked about that before with other people, and they say that the sound is really important, and you don't always get good sound that way. I'm not sure yet. I haven't tested it myself, but I, I, I bet that it's not going to be that great, but... I think if you take the time to optimize it a little bit, it might be good enough. I, I just love the idea of being on, like, essentially three platforms. And if the quality degrades a little bit, it does. It, it, mm -hmm. But it's still a, a great way to get started. And then if you find out, hey, this is working and I, I have an audience now, you can take other steps to make the, the podcast sound that much better. Mm -hmm. well, that's uh, something I had Ryan Hanley in one of my uh, uh, community hangouts. Mm -hmm. And that's something uh, that I believe he's done is he's stripped the audio from a hangout. So, and it's very clever uh, because you know people are tied to your website for the video or for the mm -hmm. blog post, mm -hmm. but the uh, but the uh, sound you can upload it to SoundCloud or something like that. So now you're portable. So now they can listen to your uh, your content uh, while they're out jogging or whatever. So. Uh, there is a bit of a quality issue, but I guess if you got kind of a core group of people um, that had decent mics and didn't have cockatiels in the background, that like, <laughs> um, you know, you could you could get a, a get a handle on that. There's actually a setting in Hangouts too, where you can select a studio audio setting, yeah. uh, which I fooled with a couple times. Which even though you know it says it's not for voice, I've used it for voice a couple times, and it seems to to help out. So. Um, I, I haven't really dialed into the whole Hangout, uh, the new Hangout 
helper thing is no, that's Ronnie Benson. Help out, help out, yeah. help out. Help yes. out. Um, <laughs> uh, I've I've looked at that, and I'm already kind of doing something similar where I've set up private forums on my own website. So I'm I'm not quite sure what the difference is that Google adds. Maybe they add some promotional muscle to it, but I've also seen you know you have to agree to their terms to do certain things, and your transaction goes through them. Um, so I'm a little leery about just jumping in. It might be good to do a few free ones just to get familiar with it. So I intend to do that. That, mm -hmm. but as far as uh, accepting them as a way to deliver commercial training, uh, I'm a little leery because once you start looking at multi-page terms of service agreements, and uh, you know Google becomes your business partner and your uh, online training venture, I, you know. I don't know. I get a little nervous, so I'd be interested to hear, you know, feedback from other people as they get into that a little bit more. Well, what I think, I think you should. Sorry, I, I think what you, the way you should look at it is just another marketplace for your services. So it, it doesn't need to cannibalize what you're doing on your own. You can't upsell from there, but you might as well just take a listing in there and see what kind of business you get from it. Because with the marketing push behind it and the built-in audience that they'll have eventually you might get clients that wouldn't have found you otherwise. Yeah, Craig is absolutely right. Um, and the way the help us are set up now, it's only one-on-one. -on -one. So essentially what Google is doing, they're taking folks who are asking questions or, or searching for answers, and they're linking them in with an expert in that particular field that they're looking for the answers in. So right now it's just one on one, and I do a free free um I have a free listing just to get people in to talk about what I'm offering as far as my other um, uh, menus that that if they want to have a one on one session with me I will set up a schedule with them and they can come in at their time at their convenience and we cook. Let's say curry chicken or something, but um, which which is a paid which which is a paid service that particular one is similar to what uh, Chef Dennis <clears throat> does with uh, Chef Hangout. Chef Hangout, yeah. Right, and and with Chef Hangout you have uh, multiple folks in there, whereas with uh, Help Out it's just one on one. Hmm. So Mark, you could you could try it like Craig says. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely yeah. going to give it a give it a shot. I, you know, I didn't mean to come off too negative on it, but I was I always read uh, a lot of these. Maybe I'm inferring too much. You know, of course, a lot of these terms of service are written to cover everything and everything from the corporation view. You know, it's written by lawyers, yeah. and a lot of it's not really stuff to worry about. But uh, you know, I was looking at, uh, for example, they seem to have a, a clause in there about. Uh, if you you know you you know getting clients through the help out through the, uh, the help help out yes help out and um, but then then billing them separately or something like that anyway I, you know I'm definitely gonna check it out and see what's going on with it because yeah. as uh, as you got as Craig points out you know you've opened yourself to another market sure um, right. as well so. But for the but for the service provider, you have to wait to be invited, or you just can't like uh, it's not where you jump in there and do it yourself. You have to wait to be invited by Google to mm -hmm. right. to do the help outs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 They're, they're uh, at least at least right now, right? And I would imagine mm -hmm. they're probably going to open it up, but you'll still have to pass the review process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you still have to be vetted because in Google's eyes, what they're Putting out there is "quote unquote" experts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. right. So you have to go through some vetting levels mm -hmm. before you uh, before you've even approved as well as your listings. Well, I mean, I just made my custom URL. Mark mm -hmm. Bang loves Google. So I mean, <laughs> I, should be, I should be good to go. I'm expecting that check mark and shield to show up on my profile any day. I've, I've made my love. Profess my love publicly. <laughs> God, I know. I was looking for a license plate in Florida to see if I could yeah. get something custom, you know. But uh, most of the good ones that I tried were, were taken, so <laughs> I didn't know about just putting Google on it, Google One or something, you know. Um, <laughs> what about Chef D? I tried that already, Larry. That one was taken up. I, I did. That was my first thought. Chef, so. Chef D L. There you go. Chef I'll have to look on that one. Yeah. 
Um, as speaking of custom URLs, has everybody? I know some of us had them before. Has, has everyone yeah, got them? Mm -hmm. uh, was everyone sent by Google the thing for it, or did any of you have to go through the process on your own? Uh, Google sent it to me. Okay. Yeah, my I have I have two. I have my personal one, and then the business page. And my business page became um, with the custom URL about uh, two weeks later. Okay, because I had a friend of mine asking, uh, David Lee, I don't know if any of you have heard of him, he's a really incredible uh, culinarian, and he has a Leet's, that's the name of his blog, too, Leet's Culinaria, and uh, he was asking me, he hasn't received his yet, and uh, he was out sick for a little while, so I thought he might have missed his invitation, but I didn't know if there was another process uh, for getting that, if anyone knew. I wonder yeah. if, it, it's, if it takes longer for some people, because Google has to do the research to make sure there aren't so many duplicates, you know, like for those who have common names, or my name isn't really common, so, and probably yeah. Chef Dennis Litley isn't really common either. <laughs> I actually got sent one for my original account because uh, it was just Chef Dennis, and then about oh. a, a month into it, Google sent me a thing saying, oh, you, have to, you can't use that name, it has to have your last name, or we're going to just bump you off, oh. so, uh, I actually just got an email. I'm going, what, what are they trying to do? Change my thing? And, just, and then I realized that this is the old account uh, that must still be active, and I'm afraid to delete it. You know, it's that paranoid about that everything else would go away too. So it's like, yeah. I'll leave it there. It's not hurting anything. Uh, yeah, I mean, so. I found that the first one that got the invite was my business page, and I'm probably in the same boat that. Um, a number of people who have registered a domain name as their name because I'm markvang.com. Oh. I'm name my company. So my business page got first dibs at markvang for the URL. And I thought about that, but there are no, there are no options with the first time around. It's like, you know, the first time it's you get plus markvang or you can say no. So I thought about it and I was like, well, what's the harm of people looking for me come to my business Google Plus business page, so that's that's definitely not a minus anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, there there's more than one person named Mark Vang, so strategically, I had to go. Uh, if I say no now and wait till they give me the option to change things, mm -hmm. uh, I lose. I might lose Plus Mark Vang totally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so then it came up. You know, it was weird. It was like a, a week and a half or two weeks later. I got the personal uh, thing on my personal profile to do it and of course but I had already taken Mark Bang so I had to add something and I couldn't think of you know if I do Mark Bang Virginia what if I move you know this is, permanent. <laughs> this is, this is like according to Google this is more permanent than marriage you can never change the <laughs> so I had to put a lot of thought into it and finally I thought you know it's a Google Plus account so if I say Mark Bang loves Google, you know, it's not like I've named my LinkedIn account Mark Bang likes Google or something goofy like that. You know, it's, it's a Google account anyway. I might as well commit to it. And, uh, you know, it'll be unique. It'll be memorable. Uh, and not something like Mark Bang USA or Mark Bang VA right. or something that I might not like later. So I might hate Google later, but if I do, I can always delete the account. And, you know, <laughs> right. If you, if you hate it, you'll be on. I'll just delete the account. But. So you really did name your account that? I thought you were kidding. <laughs> no, no, I did. Yeah. I, 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 love I shared it. a little picture. I put little hearts and stuff around my picture, and I shared my new plus mark bank <laughs> underscore loves <laughs> underscore Just Google is my, uh, is That's my a URL. That's oh, oh, so. The we possibilities. That is a classic. <laughs> uh, we do have a question here I'm going to put up, too, about see if we can get some help on this. Uh, JD wants to know, what are the differences between WordPress and Blogspot? She uses Blogspot. How can I integrate all of these into my, uh, into my blog? I'd like to add music clips, to. I can connect Hangouts, Helpouts, and Blogspot. So who knows anything about Blogspot? It's been a while since I've been on it. Yeah, I, and I, I can start answering the question. Okay. Um, Blogspot and WordPress are both just blogging platforms. Um, the difference you need to understand there is, is WordPress.com and WordPress.org. Um, WordPress.com and Blogspot are very comparable. They're just so, they're hosted services that you just sign up and you use to run your blog. Mm -hmm. uh, WordPress.org is where you really want to be. That's where you have to get your own hosting account and set up WordPress on your own to run your blog. And the, the big difference there is you have a world of opportunities there. It's, it's very flexible. You have plugins that can allow you to add your music. 
um, and do pretty much anything you can imagine, whereas Blogspot and WordPress.com, since they're hosted by you know the companies that own them, you're a lot more restricted in what you can and can't do on those mm -hmm. platforms. Mm -hmm. You're going to get more, yeah, and you're going to get more um, search engine real estate, what I call search engine real estate, from the WordPress.org. And with the WordPress.org, you can go with um, they have they have free themes as well, but I would always choose a paid theme just because it's more secure. Well, I think you'll probably see people in social media or or in any of this talking about the difference between rented property and property you own in reference yeah. to your social sites. Any of these external services like WordPress.com or Blogger, you're renting space. You're actually sitting on top of somebody else's hosting platform. Mm -hmm. And you, you have a certain amount of flexibility. I mean, there's certainly benefits to that. And in some cases, WordPress is free. But if you start buying things from WordPress, like you want a custom UR, you know, you want your domain name, you want to do mm -hmm. this, that. Those expenses can add up very quickly. Yeah. Um, so if, you know, especially as you, and, it, and you know, they're recurring expenses. So a lot of people kind of shy away from registering a domain name and setting up, but you own that, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can still deploy a WordPress. Most hosting services have like one-click scripts that will let you deploy your WordPress site and you can customize it. You own the platform mm -hmm. uh, to, based on what your hosting plan is allowing, but you have a lot more flexibility. And you don't have to worry about some, you know, when you're sitting on top of these other microblogging services, even Google Plus, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they might decide to change how something works, yeah. and that's it. Whatever they've decided to change, good or bad, is going to affect your entire, uh, you know, everything you built on top of that. So that's something to consider if you're really going to get into blogging seriously and you want to get mm -hmm. the search engine results out of it. You should look at a couple hosting plans and either deploy a WordPress site. I use Drupal is the content management system I use. So do a little research and uh, uh, you'll get a lot more out of it and you'll own the results. You'll be able to manage, you know, manage it directly. So uh, yeah. that's my advice. It's, it is more work. You have to kind of keep up with maintenance, but you're not yeah. going to get the reward if you don't build it like that, I think. Mm -hmm. right, I, 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 I would add that the, the hosted services are, are a great place to kind of play and test things, see if you might want to be a blogger or, you know, just test the waters. But what you have to remember is even if that's easier for you, if you take the technical hurdle in the beginning and go with a, your own hosted service like WordPress.org, you're not going to have to make the transfer later. So if you, if you end up growing pretty large on Blogspot, at some point almost everybody I've known wants to transfer to WordPress.org. So they have the full control. And that process can be a lot worse than just setting up WordPress.org from the beginning. Mm. Oh, yeah. As someone who did do a transfer, I, I can attest to that. And you want to make sure you have somebody that knows what they're doing, too, because it can be a real nightmare otherwise. But uh, yeah, I transferred to WordPress about a little over two years ago, and it was a, a long process. Even just updating it, I just updated it recently, and that was still a pretty good process, only not quite as, as traumatic as the first move. <laughs> <laughs> Something you, you probably don't think about, but when you try to go from WordPress.com to your own self-hosted WordPress site, uh, they, they have a fee that they'll charge you to handle that for you, which is over 100 bucks. last time I checked. Mm -hmm. And there, there really isn't any easy way to port that site yourself. So um, I agree that it's great to get started for free. I've had a, I actually have like three or four old WordPress.com sites while I was getting my, you know, getting my feet wet and blogging and learning how all this stuff works. So it's definitely something you should probably look at before you start putting money out. Um, but when, when you realize that it's going to be part of your business, or if you're starting a business. Uh, you should make that commitment because trying to change it later, you're going to destroy all the link juice that you might have built up, and uh, it's going to be a huge. You might lose some content that you had mm -hmm. set up. Um, so you want to really think about that. Uh, you know, think six months or a year down the line where you're going to want to be. Uh, and also, just, go ahead. Um, and also, as your business grows, you know, you always have more time in the beginning than you do when you're six months or a year in. So you want to get all that learning curve, you know, under your belt rather than having to shift, you know, having to have such a disruption. And, you know, if, you're really ha if you really have a good momentum in your business, then you've got to take this other thing aside. And that could, that could upset your apple cart. 
right? So I, I just I just stuck up my picture. I, I, if you, since you guys don't seem to believe my <laughs> URL, if you can pop that up there. Uh, I did. <laughs> so there it is. I've committed mm -hmm. publicly to my relations. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. So one more point on um, for the Blogspot users. I would recommend if you are on Blogspot that you go out and buy the custom domain if you haven't. Um, and the reason for that would be if you're if you're running on Blogspot without your own domain, all the links that are coming into you are going to be coming to the Blogspot domain instead of your own domain. So if you go to transfer in the future, you would lose all those links by transferring to like a WordPress.org setup. But if you already have your custom domain set up on Blogspot, which isn't very expensive. Yeah. You can then you can then make your URLs match exactly on your WordPress.org blog, so you don't lose all that valuable link juice. I never thought of that. Yeah, it's only like ten dollars a year, I think, to to right. get your domain. And uh, here's a question too from uh, JD again, and it was the same thing. It was like, so even though Blogspot is a Google product, you're better off with WordPress. And yeah, you would think you wouldn't be, and with everything else they do, they don't seem to have put as much time and effort into blocks. But although they have made some improvements in it, it's just not. You would think that with them being the surgeon, that would be the number one. Uh, yeah, it's a nice. To use. It's, it's a nice service, but it, you just don't. In the end, you just don't have the freedom to do what you want. Yeah. But, well, let's get back to some food for a minute. Larry, what have you been yeah. making lately? Let's let's talk about some food. Tell us about something you've made that's uh, really uh, something that I made that was really good. I I posted it on um, on G Plus was some Kalaloo, and I got Ooh. some uh, some requests to they they want to know how to make it, and it's it's very easy. It's essentially a, um, a vegetarian. You could have it vegetarian, or, you, or if you're a meat lover, you could put even bacon in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> basically, it's uh, it's one of those comfort foods here in Trinidad, and it's been around, you know, before I was even a glean in my daddy's eye. So <laughs> it's taro leaves, or if you don't have taro leaves, you could use some um, spinach, okras, pumpkin, garlic, onions and uh, something we have here called um, seasoning peppers or you could use um, serrano peppers mm -hmm. if, if, if you want. Cut everything up, put it in a pot, add some water, let it, uh, let it come to a boil. As it comes to a boil, you add some coconut milk to it, maybe a cup of coconut milk to give it a little sweetness, add a little salt, a little pepper, and then when it's done, which is about maybe 45 minutes later, you take a hand blender and blend everything. It basically comes out like a soup. It's very comforting, mm -hmm. and you could have it as a side dish even, which we normally do have as a side dish to rice and uh, uh, chicken if you if you if you want. Yeah, so it's mm -hmm. it's very healthy. It's very good for you, and like I said, it was um, uh, kind of a kind of a hit. <laughs> <It's downside. laughs> Is the pumpkin cooked already, or is that... no, no, no? You 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 cut up the pumpkin. You, everything is raw, and you put everything into the pot. Okay. And and the beauty about it is is a one pot dish. I like that. That's yeah. mm -hmm. my style. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I know it's getting cold up in North America. Not by you. Wait, not where you are, Chef Dennis. But... No, but we we did have a cold front coming through today. It was seventy five. So yeah, it's cold up here for sure. Could you do that same process? In a uh, pressure cooker, do you think you it could, would have this you, same you consistency? Could, you could, yes. We've also you could also prepare it in a pressure cooker. The cook time will be much faster, as, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, and when you, when it pressurizes, you uncap it, and of course you use your hand blender. But we before hand blenders and before blenders were were invented, we had something called a swizzle stick. Let, let me see if I could I could find one for you guys. I I, oh, I have one in the kitchen. Hold on. Sure thing. Well, no, I, bet this would... I, I remember that as like some kind of candy. <laughs> that, I think they used to call it for mixing bar drinks too. Uh, yeah. Oh right, yeah. bar drinks for sure. Bar drinks. Um, yeah, this so... would probably be something good for a crock pot too. I would think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you you could put it in a crock pot. It'll it'll cook all day, and mm -hmm. by the time you get home, 
again, it'll be soft, but you have to blend it. And if you don't have a hand blender or regular blender, use swizzle stick. Oh, wow. Yeah. I've never seen that. And you just put it in and swizzle huh. it by hand. Uh -huh. How about that? It, it, and there's also the, the wire one, the wire version. Oh, cool. Huh. That just breaks everything up. Yeah, it just breaks everything up. How about mm -hmm. that? So that was that was the manual labor blender yes. before there was blenders. Exactly. So when I was small growing up, and Granny had uh, Kalalu for we normally have Kalalu for Sunday on Sundays. Hmm. Um, my job was to cut up the coconut and or grate the coconut, sorry, to make the milk because we didn't have canned coconut back then. Everything was from scratch. And then after it's cooked, I would have to blend it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, this was her original um, hand hand blender, manual wow. hand blender. This is my yeah. granny's. That's cool. Wow. Yeah. Mm. I know. Sometimes uh, we don't appreciate or think, or some people yeah. don't remember the old ways and how uh, how our grandmothers made yeah. things. I, yeah. I had. Um, my grandmother's old mortar and pestle for the longest time, the stone one that she used to grind corn in when she wow. made tortillas uh, by hand. So you, know. you don't have it anymore, sir? I, I know my brother has it now. So oh, okay. uh, yeah. well, it's in good hands. It's in good hands. <laughs> it's in good hands yeah. Not that he ever uses it. I think it's a paperweight for him, but, <laughs> but that's okay. I would I would think that your food would uh, mean a lot more to you too when you have to use these more manual tools rather than just clicking a button. Yeah, and uh, you know, especially to, um, well, I am so accustomed to eating fresh because everything down here is from the um, garden to the table or from farm to table mm. kind of thing. Um, I have a couple cousins who are farmers, and every two weeks they would on their way to market. They would stop by here and, and bring melangen or, or, or you call it eggplant, um, mm. all my all my vegetables, carrots. You know, the only thing I buy really is some protein because I have chickens that I that I rear. So I get eggs from my chickens and nice. when I want to have a one of the chickens I well, you know what to do. <laughs> do you do the twist thing? <laughs> yeah, the twist thing. Uh, yeah. The, the, the twist thing, and then you put them under a bucket. So when uh -huh. they start beating up, they'll be uh, contained. <laughs> I don't want to bring that up, Chef. <laughs> that's all right. I, I remember I... vaguly. Yeah. Uh, my, my grandmother, we had I'd gotten some for one Easter. They used to sell them in the supermarkets when mm -hmm. I was little, and I think they even dyed them different colors, and... Uh, my grandmother took them to raise them because uh, we didn't have any place where we were. And uh, but then they went to some farmer happy for farm. for for a, for a happier <laughs> life at some farm. And 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 we had chicken that night too. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, my mother told me that later, and I was like, oh my god. That's why you never name your food. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Not a yeah, good thing yeah. to do. No. And we can get on first name basis. We just had a nice comment here from uh, David. Amerland is watching. Yay. And uh, Chef Dennis Litley hey, interviews David. are never anything uh, less than riveting. And I love the approach Mark Vang has taken in terms of his work. And he's right. It's incredibly difficult actually working and keeping up with everything. Boy, ain't that the truth. Yeah, <laughs> I was just you know, I was thinking of David when we were talking about images earlier and he has an entire new book he can write now so he's all set <laughs> so uh, you know he just finished his semantic search and now he can I don't know what your semantic image search I don't know what he, he gets to come up with that so uh, uh, he's all set so well that would be good we could use it I, I have a semantic search so I could use a semantic uh, image search as well anything he tells us is, is uh, pretty important yeah yeah Oh, well, it's been a beautiful day here. Uh, guys, anything else anyone would like to talk about before we uh, call it a day? Or Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's coming uh, up. Larry. Right around the corner. Yeah. Do you celebrate yeah. Thanksgiving? In, uh... It's funny you bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought of it with the bird, you know. Yeah, no, we don't. <laughs> no, we, we don't celebrate Thanksgiving here. It's pretty much a U.S. Um, 
a holiday. Uh, when I lived in holiday in the U.S., yes, I used to celebrate it, but now I'm back home. We don't celebrate it here. However, we do turkey on around Christmas. Hmm. So, um, are turkeys local? Do you have uh, wild turkeys? We don't. Um, some of the most of the turkeys have to be imported, but we do have some small turkey farms. But again, they're not enough to supply everyone. Um, because uh, Christmas, like I said, turkey is big as well as pork. <laughs> we have turkeys pork. everywhere here. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's interesting. So, so uh, to Larry, turkey is like caviar, you know, it's imported, uh, rare imported yeah. food, right? Wow. You know, yeah, yeah. Here in the U.S., we have 5,000 acre farms filled with 10 million yeah. turkeys. Yeah, and, yeah. and uh, the, the beauty about it is, you know, turkey is like real cheap around now. What is it, like 59 cents a pound or something crazy like that? <laughs> well, there, there are times I literally have to wait for them to cross the road. So they're really cheap. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen them here. We just passed some the other day in Florida, too. There were uh, turkeys out there. So not to mention other kinds of birds. We've seen some very interesting wildlife so far. Oh, well, in the good. city, I see different kind of turkeys. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other issue. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Although I always remember, I don't know if everyone ever saw uh, WKRP when they decided to drop turkeys from the uh, yeah, helicopter. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and, the, and the guy swore he didn't know turkeys couldn't fly. <laughs> that's right. With Les Nessman going, oh my God, the turkeys are hitting everywhere. <laughs> Frozen. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> One of my favorite uh, favorite episodes. Uh, well, guys, thanks so much for being on today. It's been a pleasure. No Thank problem. You. Thank you. Uh, uh, you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm and, glad, uh, you, glad to be here, Chef Dennis. Oh, uh, my pleasure. Um, thanks. <laughs> thanks everyone for stopping by. And uh, we've had fun on Good Day Google Plus. Make sure to stop by every Friday. We're on at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and now I'm coming to you from beautiful sunny Florida. So uh, we're gonna have a good day, Google Plus, and see you all real soon. Bye bye. Bye, bye everybody.